How is everybody doing? Wie geht es euch? Lieber auf Deutsch oder auf Englisch? Seid ihr schon müde? You guys are tired or what? How is everybody doing? Ah, yes, we need this energy, we need this positivity. My name is Topo Kick. I am going to be taking care of the panel tonight, the panel discussion. The actually taking care is too much of a big definition of what I'm going to be doing. I'm basically just going to introduce the panel participants and just shut the fuck up. Because there is nothing that I can say that will have you learn anything about sex work and art and the combination of both of them. Because only the people that are involved in sex work and art, the people that actually do the work, they can talk about it. And we're, I'm just going to try to get them to flow and have you enjoy what they have to say. Now, before we get started, uh, there is going to be, I don't know if it's Elizabeth or somebody else is going to be walking around with a microphone. So, questions are allowed. Fragen sind bitte sehr erwünscht. Ja, gleich von Anfang an. Wer gerne uh, eine Frage stellen möchte, bitte Hand heben oder winken. Elisabeth, who is going to have the mic? Oder ich werde einfach hinkommen, auch mit dem Mic. Und, okay. Ja. Okay. 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 Yes. They have a voice, yes. Uh, wer Probleme hat mit der Stimme, uh, kann ich mein Mic verwenden. Aber ansonsten einfach aufstehen und reden, Fragen stellen. Uh, wir wünschen, also es ist erwünscht, dass uh, uh, Publikum, Publikumsbeteiligung uh, stattfindet. Yes. So, I would like to invite next to me with the, pardon, Philippe? With the next uh, mic here. Please give a big round of applause for Dreischwer Janusher. Yes, he is going to represent migrant sex workers. He is their voice tonight. So please, any questions you have concerning migrant sex work, feel free, raise your hand and ask Dreischwer, and he will be. More than happy to answer no all your questions. Life questions. Huh? No private life questions. No private, yes, and uh, <laughs> respectful questions, of course, but there are no stupid questions, only stupid answers. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Exactly. So, but please try to be respectful, try to respect the people of the panel. Uh, it's a difficult subject for some, maybe for others not, but let's try to be respectful the way we uh, get along with each other. Uh, next on stage, please, Constanze. Where is Constanze? Yes, Constanze Hagegner, please. Please in the house. Natürlich muss ich noch dazu sagen, dass Constanze nicht nur äh, Drama Script Writerin ist für äh, für Television and also an actress for some of you who don't know, but you also started here on yes. stage. Yes. So you're basically coming back home. Yes, a few years ago I started as the little princess of Foxtel. Well, look at so you. So I'm really, you know, somehow. And now you're the queen. You're, now you're the queen on this little stage of ours. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Next, I would like to invite on stage, uh, and I have the wrong mic, I think. Uh, Nummer 5 is my mic, eh? Jetzt habe ich's, jetzt passt. Uh, Ophelia Ortega, mit einem riesen Applaus. Eine Choreografin. She's a, yes, here she is. Uh, it's hot under those mics. Hell! Uh, lives and works in, in no, Sweden. No, Is that correct? You live and work in Sweden? Stockholm. Yes. Hmm? In Stockholm, yeah. In Stockholm, yes. And you're here for two weeks? I'm here in a residency at Inkerstans. For two weeks. Nice. Yeah. Yes. So, welcome here. 
in our little world. Like this. And last but not least, last but not least, you have already seen the wonderful movie in the beginning, No Democracy Here, from Liad Hussein. Uh, let, me get, let me get your last name right. Because, yeah, I know Liad, I know Hussein, for me that's no problem, but the other name is just... I'll be up. Wait, 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 I'll get it right, I'll get it right, I'll get it right. You can't trick me now. Uh, Just come here, Leon. Please go back to Leon. Leon is saying, Shalom, Salam. Leon is saying, Leon. Exactly. And Leon is an artist, of course, and uh, a musician, an actress. You saw her movie, and uh, you are free to also ask her all the questions that you would like answered about the movie that we just saw at the beginning. And yeah, it's, it's kind of a very packed and incredible event. Um, I'm also uh, a long-time former sex worker and uh, a coordinator of a migrant sex workers peer education uh, project, which I co-founded. So I'm here on both the art and the sex work hat. Yeah, feel free to ask me anything. Yes, so I am very happy that you all are here because uh, there is a whole bunch of information that I need to get from you guys and I hope that you are also as interested in as I am. And uh, I would like to start with the first question, Kraishe, please. Can you tell us, you are here to represent sex workers and uh, your organization also tries to um, how should I put it? Self-organized, self-organized uh, sex workers. Why is it important that self, uh, uh, sex workers self-organize themselves? Why is that uh, important to you? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm here as a representative of Red Tradition, migrant sex workers group Vienna, and we are community-based or self-organized uh, or organized organization like you already said. Why it's important? Every movement, every fight in the world for, for uh, fighting for some human rights is beginning from the people who are asking for these rights. So woman movement begins with the woman, gay LGBT movement has beginning with the, with the people who are belonging on this community. It's the same case with the sex workers. Uh, we always, I, I always want to say that I don't want to get uh, wrong understand from the from the people of course that we need supporters of course that that we work with partners with media with uh, another organization with another community based organization also but uh, voices of sex workers needs to be heard and the main motto of the sex work movement on global level it's nothing about us without us so when it's something or some someone or stakeholders or government, our institution makes some decision about our lives, we need to be present, we need to be uh, heard, we need to be sent our voices, we need to be, because the people from the community know about their own problems and struggles and what kind of model of regulation they, they, they're looking for. Yes. And, uh, yes. yes. Your mic is not working? Oh. Is, it, is it? Is it? If not, I will, I will shut up loud enough for you. It's working. It? Yeah. It's working. Great. Um, I just want to say that uh, there is some sort of parallel trajectory between the gay liberation movement of the 60s and the sex workers' rights movement. We also know that Stonewall was started by trans sex workers and where as LGBTQI and others really moved forward uh, with their position of rights in the last 50 years, it has not been the same for sex workers, unfortunately. We have seen, on one hand, uh, since the 90s, more or less, a broadening of sex workers' organizations and networks all over the world, not just in the West, but also in Latin America, in India, in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, for instance. But still, the legislation against sex workers have been 
to criminalize them in one form or another where it has been in comparison to LGBT rights, to give them more and more and more rights. And if you just think for a second that uh, sex work is something that is considered to be uh, something that is undesirable, and sex work, we cannot really out ourselves and we cannot really speak about ourselves and our experience, so we, we don't have a voice. The reason why sex workers need to speak at the end of the day is because they are these subaltern. And so it is up to us as a society to make room for them to be able to speak and to be the ones responsible to, to be making our own legislation, which at the end of the day affects us and our rights, our work conditions, but also our living conditions. Leanne, how do you see it? Yes. Ophelia is a, a, a choreographer and she also uses sexuality, is that right uh, Ophelia, in your, in your choreographies? Can you explain to us a little bit of, uh, of your work? And my question would be, uh, after you have explained how your work is and your choreography uh, together with sexuality, um, if the work that Ophelia do, does, Leah, is it, can it also be a, a voice for sex workers? Yes, because she, I don't, you're not a sex worker, I, you're a choreographer. Yeah, um, I mean, like, this is what I, I think yeah. myself of. I mean, uh, my, my work also sometimes taps into sex work, but I still, I still don't really call it sex work, because for me it's also part of a research and an interest and something that I do on the side, so it's not really like, I mean, the, 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 the like I want to start with choreography first and come back to that after. Because I think that uh, by making art and working with choreography, which is my field of art, uh, it could be not a voice for sex workers, but it could be somehow, from my privileged position, could somehow help or, or support or be a, like a good ally in that, um, yeah, in the fights for sex workers' rights. So I think like if I make work that are shown like in big dance venues that deal with sexuality uh, or like queer sexuality or queer bodies, then I hope for like that their discussion will also continue and that it can somehow I mean open up for more discussions and more space for yeah for many things and people and, and experiences and uh, so yeah my my own like experience or background in sex work is very little, it's just like sometimes being like selling sex over phone or like being interested in like working with choreography and dance on movies for adults but it still, it still comes from my desire and interest in choreography and dance so it's um, yeah. So uh, last year uh, you won this prize at the Boonstans for your uh, choreography BB? Yeah, the uh, attention is that, and uh, does that does that have to do with sex work? Not with sex work necessarily, but very much with sexuality and with the sexuality. Sex and, and queer femininity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Leah, yes, my question to come back. First of all, I just I just want to thank you for, for, for outing yourself. It is completely not an obvious thing that anybody speaks about any sort of sexual experience. It is something that stigmatizes us, it is something that marginalizes us, and in some ways outlaws us. So, so we really need to, to encourage us and, and to thank it. Um, anybody who does, come forward. Second of all, we really have to recognize the fact that sex workers like innately are performers. What we do when I, um, okay, I was a sex worker and then uh, let's say my, my, uh, my experience in sexual really informed a lot of my artistic work as maybe you've seen a bit in the film and you will see also later uh, tonight in the performance. But a lot of what we do is play certain roles for clients and it is uh, something that is not acknowledged. And even if however we get paid in comparison to people who get paid in the art world, it is something that still puts us in a very, uh, the bottom of the barrel in terms of, uh, of, of a social standings. I definitely think that there can be uh, performative actions and like usage of sexuality that is used for the embedderment of sex workers' rights. But we need to remember that a lot of sex workers nowadays are the ones who are performers themselves 
and some of the things that they are doing is speaking out their truth, speaking out their uh, narratives you know, through the form of art, which is something that is no longer black and white. It's not just about uh, placard sort of statements, but really intricate statements about uh, sex work. That's, that's one thing. Another issue that they do is very clear organizing for sex workers' rights through um, through art, and one example of that maybe is historically Annie Sprinkle, uh, Scarlett Harlot, uh, nowadays also Marianne Chabois and the SNAP uh, Sex Workers Film Festival. And the last thing uh, sex workers do specifically through art is community building. A lot of the, the when I do an event, for instance, that I did in, in Berlin where I live uh, in the Schwules Museum, uh, that was about uh, legislation affecting sex workers, there was a really, really large participation of sex workers coming to be as an audience. And when they see and hear uh, somebody embodying the role and the voice of a sex worker, it moves them and it brings them together because they feel heard and represented in a way um, that they don't otherwise in the media. And this is why uh, it's important. And this is some of the ways in which we can make a difference. Yes, Constance, I have a question for you because um, you are uh, you are still an actress and yes. you also write uh, uh, scripts yes. for uh, different productions. Yeah. And uh, the experience that I had as a musician and as a, as an actor also is that. Sometimes, uh, some people tell me, well, why don't you perform and um, I can't pay you, but you will get exposure, you know? So, how, and I, I would also like uh, uh, Taishe and Liad also to, 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 to uh, put your scent, how do you say that? Your salt, your salt into the soup. And uh, yes, uh, <laughs> do, you, do, do, do you also have to, to deal with that kind of... Uh, of um, Abuse uh, in the in the artistic world, and is it an abuse? And can you compare yourself also to a sex worker? Do you sometimes feel dirty? Sometimes you just spontaneously say, "I feel fucked," you know, uh, because um, this I don't know the whole situation. I'm on stage and nobody cares about me, or the director uh, is not treating me well. I did, don't get enough respect. I'm, used as a puppet, uh, especially as an author in the television business, you very often feel like a prostitute because there are many people who are not creative, but they just mess up my creative work. Um, I, 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 I try to define this small border between work with respect, being paid or not, I don't care. I, I, this, this doesn't often, obviously doesn't make a difference whether you get three euro or three thousand euro. This doesn't make a difference to the field I'm a prostitute. So there must be something else. So I thought it is a question of pride and dignity and and respect and solidarity, of course, and also uh, taking care about uh, each other. Um, and maybe I thought now listen. You, I thought maybe uh, we have the title Art and Prostitution and the connecting link is work. And we all work and our work is worth uh, a certain amount of respect or of money. Maybe I'm, not, I'm really not getting a clear point. I'm just listening and learning today because I thought maybe I'm a little bit too prude on this panel. <laughs> but, um, if the main thing is, of course, that we uh, support each other and that you respectfully listen and be open-minded. It's just about prejudice and judging each other. This is the, the, the poison this, that makes you feel ugly and, and, and abused, I guess. Treasure? Say dirty. I'm not okay with this idea that you need to make operation or Synonym for sex or sex services need to be seen as a dirty. No, why? I mean, we are all living in the societies where people are getting shame or getting red faces because, or someone might say something about sex. And then when we switch this 
sex and switching with the work, then the taboos are bigger. And when you speak about that we are fucked, I think that we are all fucked by capitalism. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's not a question of uh, who is abused or who wants to work the work what he works. I mean, if you go outside now in the next supermarket, for sure that we will find some woman who doesn't buy, uh, like this work. It's shit work, but they must work. They work. So it's the same with the sex worker. Some sex workers like this work, some sex workers work this work because they must work but because they want to. They must be in the end of the month's uh, rent, they must do, to raise their own child, on so vital. So it's, it's the same. I think on this topic, the question is about the capitalism. We are all slaves of the capitalism. Capitalism fucked us. Yes. So capitalism is the thing, and we are all warriors of capitalism. Uh, Liad, yes, what is your take on that? I mean, I just want to make one sort of distinction. I'm absolutely agreeing with the both of you guys. I just think that there is something about sex work particularly that... Um, let's, let's start with art. There is an element that for the, the class that it belongs to, it tends to obscure this element of when am I working for free, when am I working for clout, when am I working uh, to write something on my resume, um, where sex is not straightforward for money, uh, which is, you see all across uh, the cultural sector. It is a market and we are often out there, very unfortunately, competing with each other, even though we should not, we should be working with solidarity. In sex work, everything is very explicit. So, it's not, uh, there is no uh, skirting around the issue. It's however much, whatever service it is that you want, I name the price, you get it. But exactly for that, and for the fact that it is, has to do very straightforward with sexuality, this is the price that sex workers pay, and this is the price that they pay uh, being uh, marginalized. And I want to uh, add something to that, which is the gender aspect, of course. Um, it's something that we see all across the, the economic spec specter and, and art and sex work is not anything that, that evades that. Men get paid uh, more than women, men get more, much more prestige for what it is that they do, generally speaking. It's definitely true for art, but it is also definitely true for, uh, for sex work. So sex workers find themselves in the intersectional marginality of gender and uh, for using their sexual services and oftentimes also uh, being migrants. And additionally to that, one more thing, us being women, wherever it is that we are, and definitely all over the arts, we are reduced to the role of our bodies. And oftentimes our work is not acknowledged as such. It is acknowledged only as our body, our beauty, and our pussy, rather than the skills that we provide. And this is absolutely also true for sex work. Rather than having, it, having the world see it as, as a job that is skilled, is something that people learn how to do and, uh, and do professionally, it is something that, professionally or not professionally, but it requires a level of skill. A lot of people see it as just spreading your legs and being a victim to whatever comes. And this I, I see as completely unfair. Uh, oh. I mean, just linking to what you said uh, about similarities between sex work and performing arts. Uh, not to, because I don't, not to compare or to have this kind of like conflict between the two and say that it's better than the other, but also like, because my point of view is still choreography, so I'm, I'm just gonna, like, thanks for sharing this, and I'm gonna add what I can add, uh, basically. But I was thinking about uh, performing sexuality and performing, um, yeah, for work, and also about femininity in the body, what you just said about uh, being yeah, perceived as a body and not for your skill. But I'm, I'm very interested in actually working with the things that are still surface with femininity that, can, that is still about just like uplifting or allowing this to be the thing. Not to say that it's only that and, and like actually to uplift the vulnerability, the 
failure, the I don't know, the emptiness or the the actual only the body that that's just giving itself is what you were saying. Like that I find it so interesting to um, to put like a woman that is sexy for someone else's eyes basically and that's also fine. There is no feminist twist to it. It's feminist in itself because that's also something should be included in femininity or something that you'd like to do or something you're interested in and should be allowed to do. I mean this is just like uh, the idea of like opening up and uh, allowing multiple stories, sires, bodies. Um, so I was just making a connection to what you said. I mean it's different but also like I thought about some similarities. I don't know if you know what I mean or get it. But, like, yeah. 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 Es ist ganz klar, wir sind alle Huren des Systems, ja. Thank you very much, it's very interesting. I am, I'm just wondering, as I listen to the different positions, I have the impression that it's not, um, yeah, that it's somehow uh, flattened the different experiences of a sex worker and the different motivations and reasons and why somebody comes to this to this to do this type of job, uh, which um, I think, um, yeah, it's uh, very very and it's varied, and it's uh, I do believe there might be some people who do it with more of uh, like um, body awareness and more like in this performativity of the body and this uh, as, as more what you were talking about and what you were describing and which is, is I think is very like um, would be like a, the ideal way of having a sex work but I also think there are also other situations or yeah that where it's actually more um, yeah a, a form of a necessity and a form of exploitation of the body which really like uh, yeah, and, and uh, which also can have like a psychological uh, other like uh, uh, reasons, and you know, so there is a big scale, and I think I had the impression that it's like not making a distinction between this big scale can also be, it has it's problematic because maybe this is also one of the reasons why it's also difficult for legislation, for example, or for social stigma, or for because. Yeah, the, uh, it's not like um, yeah. If it's not clear which how to talk about it and how which which part is being referred to, how to like yeah how to talk about it. So okay. I'm just thinking about how is this. Can I yes, go ahead. Okay. Please. So first of all, there is. I I want to thank you for pointing out the differences because sex workers are absolutely not. Uh, uh, a unified category of people. However, the differentiation, the binary system between this emancipated, liberal, uh, middle upper class local sex worker and the uh, migrant, poor, victimized sex worker is absolutely false. Whatever it is that we do, we make choices out of the range of choices that we have and there is no choice under capitalism. And we have to say that. And this is not so different under performance. How many performance also? How many performers also have to go and work in other jobs because they cannot make ends meet with the the, the work that they do? And the legislation that is happening out of many countries is absolutely not one that is listening or that is willing to listen to sex workers' voices, but oftentimes works very much against them and very much in opposition to listen to any, anything that any sex workers say, irregardless of their status. And I kind of want to throw something a little bit 
provocative out there because I know that some of you also uh, are, are out of the artistic realm and that is uh, the, the issue of appropriation. A lot of, of what uh, us performers do is of course to perform. But sex workers, as I said before, they perform all the time. There's, and, and as you said before also, um, the element of using sexuality, not as your own sexuality, but as a performative tool, is something that sex workers have done forever. And I think that at a certain point in history, that was taken by performers and used in different points of art as a self-emancipatory practice and of course on the stage in choreography and uh, in theater. So my question is when has there been um, uh, an, an incorporation or a thank you or a giving back to sex workers for the skills that they have given us and for, for, for what they have shown us and how they use their bodies and how they use their sexuality as a performative practice and when has it been uh, straightforward appropriation. So, Ophelia, can you maybe give an answer? Because uh, if I read in your bio, it says that uh, you also have a notion of voluntary objectification. And I think that's what we're talking about here. Uh, performers or artists that, are, that use uh, what they have seen maybe or learned from sex workers on stage. And uh, how do you see that? So you're uh, objectifying yourself voluntarily and basically feeding off of knowledge that you have gained from sex workers. Yeah, to one extent, yes, for sure. And I don't know, I mean, I'm just, just thinking what you said, like, I thought, like, wasn't it a sex worker who taught Elvis how to dance? Like, or like this kind of, that it's, it's never, and she was never credited for that either. Like, um, and I cannot say like why why sex workers haven't been it would be fair to understood you right, like why sex workers haven't been credited for the things that artists today use in a different way, like it's appropriate. But um, so yeah, I mean <laughs> but what what I do when I do work with objectification is also coming from a feminist perspective or a feminist uh, practice of um, allowing certain desires to be there and equally uh, respected or treated as something you should go for and by that also yeah working the choreography around that so I don't know yeah okay 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 um, may I ask something? yes of course I'm thinking uh, I'm asking myself and you uh, why is there still a marketplace for the product sex? Why do we need these workers? Who is buying these goods, this, this service, and why? Why do we need it? Why is it still a profession? I mean, if, if I'm not correct me if I'm wrong, vielleicht sind da ältere Damen und Herren, die mehr Erfahrung, äh, geschichtlich wissen. Mike, you want to say something? Okay, uh, but uh, while I come with the mic over there, maybe you can start thinking about telling me uh, sex workers, uh, or basically, yeah, sex workers used to be uh, respected, I think, back in the days, in the days that was like 3,000 years ago, I don't know. So it used to be a respectable profession. And sometimes during history, uh, sex work became something dirty, something that, uh, yeah, you know, so it used to be a highly respected profession, and then something happened along history. So think about it while I pass on the mic. Um, I'm a little bit confused, and I don't know if your question was serious. Because you can literally buy someone who sings for you, you can buy someone who massages you, and why should you not be able to buy a sex? This is something I don't understand. Because often, when you want to experience yourself, when you want to try new things, so maybe you don't know anyone who can do that for you. Maybe you have fantasies. It's easy to go to a sex worker. You can talk to them. They're professionalized. They know what they're doing. They can help you experience yourself. They can maybe give you something that other people can't do because they are professionalized. And I think everyone should have the right and also have the possibility to explore themselves in a way with someone who's consensual and knowledgeable and someone 
that you can also pay. I would rather have someone go to a sex work and appreciate their work than either not live their fantasies or either do it with a partner who's not really into it. I would also like to have this possibility of just going somewhere for consensual sex instead of being frustrated, instead of maybe out of your sexuality, maybe out of your ability, maybe out of your body that is so heavily stigmatized in society, not be able to have sex. And because there are so many different needs out there around sexuality and desire, I think it's great that sex work exists, so why should it not exist? This is, as long as people have sexuality and as long as people have all the different needs, so long there will be, in my, in my opinion, a desire for sex workers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this. So, um, what, what has been said here is basically, uh, if you can pay a singer to sing and a dancer to dance, why can't you pay a sex worker to have sex with your answer for the yeah. I mean, to to totally the same. That was also in my mind. Everyone uh, needs to have a right, if once for any 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 reason to 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 buy or uh, to have some of sexual services, depending from the dancing, hotline operators, uh, sex services, or etc. So everyone needs to have this right. Understand me? I wasn't offensive. I was curious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Nobody's offended. Nobody's maybe, offended. maybe I can, yeah, I can say ahead, something, ahead. something to it in, in regard to to why we need sex in general. First of all, I mean, we kind of need it to procreate. That's a part of what it is that we do, and it is something that also brings us pleasure. Having said that, specifically, what sex workers do is and has been for as long as patriarchy existed something that challenges patriarchy instead of being dependent on a single man for money who provides the woman with uh, with a form of economy and with a livelihood she takes uh, the right to be independent to sleep with whoever many men that she wants and to be autonomous and that has been seen for a very long time as a threat and because of that it has been undesirable what I'm asking all of you guys is to try to work to change that so anyone who has any sort of stereotype or misconceptions about that think about yourself and the way that you do relationships and the way that you do sex and then think about, again, specifically the fact that most sex workers in the world today are also migrants, are also people that are criminalized because they cross borders. And the question for us is, how do we support each other across those lines? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to, thank you very much for having me on. I'm going to take two more questions, and then because we only have 10 more minutes, and I'm, I have to be strict, I'm sorry. I have to be strict with the time. So first question here. Actually, it's not a question. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a, an answer to the, question, uh, to the question, why do we need sex work? Yeah. For me, it's, uh, this, that kind of question is resonant and exactly reflect why do we need oxygen? Why do we need to eat? Why do we need to, like, you know, put on clothes? Because it's part of our life, it's part of human experience. So as long as we continue to be human and need to just like, you know, fill out our needs, sex work is going to continue. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for that. And, okay, sir, coming, coming to you. First, the young lady over there, maybe you can come towards me. Yes. Thank you to Short, the short, short. Stay here with the mic. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't okay. move. Um, if I, I have to make short answers. A short question, yes, go ahead. Okay, so I, I, I thought the answer, the question, what are the context, and I think you will uh, understand it, I hope, for all of us. Do you think for a long time we have the sentence, heart is prostitution or art is sex work? Do you think we can say sex work is heart? Great question. Is sex work art? Or can sex work be art? Let's put it like that. Can it be art? I mean, the movie that we saw at the beginning, it was, that was great art. It was not sex, I mean, again, it was, it was very much informed by sex work, but can we say that the main topic was art? I don't know, maybe I leave it to you guys to answer. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what does Constance? In Viennese we have a, a 
was uh, saying that if um, art must be something, uh, Kunst muss was sein, was ich nicht kann, weil wenn ich was kann, ist kein Kunst mehr. Uh, also, <laughs> art must be something that I cannot do, because if I can do something, it is not art anymore. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe it is so as if interpretation. There is also that is so very this Italian guys who is doing constitution in the museum to find some uh, curator to find I mean to find some uh, gallerist is just uh, I don't know how to say in English. Uh, if it's not too complicated, okay. you have to say like to say that. He around. He walks around. So it's like a object of art yeah. and the front of Mona Lisa in there. The by watching it sometimes, so he's doing both things in the same time. Oh, so he's watching art and... Yes, he's consuming, that he's creating also, it's part of his art. So, uh, in meanwhile, <coughs> he gets fucked by Gavis and uh, have better uh, a position and it's something also about to, uh, you know, camping in the hierarchy of society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sleeping to the top. Voilà. Okay, okay, okay. Well, that would be voluntary objectification. Objectification. Yes, just shortly. Where is Kia? Kia, yeah. I think that I have an answer to you. I'm not an artist, but I know all six workers that I know, including me also. Like acting every fucking day for many, many years or months or whatever, I'm just sure that all six workers that I know, they can be really, really good actors because we have a practice, you know. That's why, that's the one of the reason why I think that. But. I mean, I would also say, some, like, just to be very straightforward, some sex workers, you tell them that what they're doing is art, they're like, are you kidding me? And they would be completely offended. On the other hand, there are a very specific group of people that are sex workers and are also artists. I think that some of the problem that sex workers have is that the minute that you are labeled as a sex worker, you're not allowed to be anything else. And this is the problem between that also, the difference between that and performers. As a performer, you're allowed to use whatever performative tools that you have and to engage with whatever social topic that you have and then drop it and move on to the next one. As a sex worker, you're not allowed to go on to the next topic. That's all you have. I used to work as a journalist. Oh, yes. I used to, I used to work at a, at a journalist at what was then the, uh, one of the most respectable newspapers in Palestine and Israel and um, the, the head editor came up to me and he said yeah I remember this article that you wrote about sex work in our paper some years ago but you're kidding right you don't really do that and the reason that he could just absolutely not put the two together that if I ever did sex work I could ever do anything else at the same time I want to say that people that do art specifically art around the, the issue of sex work, or even not, and are sex workers, those should be uh, given the stage. And here I just want to, to go back to what Traje said earlier. For me the question is what can we do uh, to, to work in solidarity uh, with each other in terms of the groups of, of, of artists and sex workers specifically. And in the sex workers movement, as you said before, there is a statement that says, nothing about us without us. And that means that at some point, artists need to move over and make room for sex workers to be the one who are speaking about their subjects on, on those stages. Yes, representation matters. So thank you for that question, that was a great question. Thank you for keeping it short. That's why we can add, we can add another one. Uh, danke. Uh, first, I want to give answer to Kia. Um, I'm sex worker and my grandchild is sex worker. I think I'm into the arts because I did speak group sex in the museum. That's for me art. And nobody don't do that. Nobody don't do group sex in the museum. I did that. I'm an artist. And the second question for the red lady. Um, honey, I'm beautiful. If you want to buy some beautiful things, you pay. And I'm beautiful. Of course you will pay. And people need that. If uh, yeah, and last uh, answer for you. I don't know your name. I'm sex worker. I'm slut. But I never was feeling uh, shame of myself because I don't doing some human trafficking. I don't kill people. Just I'm doing my job 
and I'm proud of myself. Woo! Thank you very much for that, sir. Yes. Respect. Respect. Uh, and I think respect was, uh, I think it's going to be the word of the evening tonight. Yes, I think that is uh, a word that we can all uh, come to love and to uh, embrace. Respect each other, respect everybody, respect every profession, and do not, do not uh, uh, minimize people as long as you have not been walking in their shoes. And now to close the whole thing, I would like each and every one of you, starting with Leah. Starting with huh? Leah, uh, do you have anything that you would absolutely like our audience to, 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 to take home tonight? Wow. Um, let me think for a second. First, you know that there is a rest of this program. Just, just making sure. Um, since you guys are here and we can also galvanize you, I would just like you to inform yourselves about the laws happening here and about the laws that come from, from, uh, from Germany, but the laws to criminalize clients, to please take steps to fight them, to, step, to stand next to sex workers, not just only on the stage and not only in the theaters, but when they fight against legislation that is against them, uh, laws to criminalize clients are essentially laws that criminalize clients. It's spreading all over Europe like cancer, and we're asking for your help uh, to fight them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ophelia, Ophelia, any last words? Um, I would encourage people to uh, ask when you don't know. I mean, it's also not always... Um, I mean, for instance, it's not always my job to explain everything about, let's say, feminism to a dude who doesn't know shit and doesn't want to inform himself. But so when you've read the book and you still have a question, or when you see a show and you don't get why, I think it's better to start a discussion and ask and talk about it because this is how we change things and inform each other, like be together with the questions we have um, instead of just being against something you don't don't know exactly what it is. I mean, it's the Thinking also from seeing so many shows here at the festival and like things that I don't get or disagree with, but it's also great to have people to talk to about it or, or um, actually your colleagues that are on stage and like, you're like, what is this about or what is yeah, what is your work about? I want to know more. Thank you, okay. thank you, thank you, thank you. So stand next to sex workers, ask questions, and Jesus Christ, you all have a smartphone and Google. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Uh, Constance, um, I just thought being a Viennese, I really enjoy this Impulse Tanz Festival every summer because it sort of yeah, it blows in a new wind and new ideas and, and this international bunch of people um, which rem who remember us that this little soup pot we are cooking in in is not the world, and is not every, is not everything, because we are having a very difficult political time. We are up to elections, and I'm afraid that we will fall back into very, very rightish and right populist uh, corner in our um, government. So. Thank you for just uh, opening up our windows and please come back because all this exists and it's funny and it's open and it's nice and it's love and it's intelligent yes. and not what they all uh, tell us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Us. Yes. And last but not least, my homeboy, my man, yeah. Trashe. But say, uh, I would say yes, we need support definitely. Please don't patronize us because many, many supporters do the wrong thing. They patronize sex workers, they don't stand up with sex workers. The struggling and the fighting being in Austria in general, especially for the migrant sex workers, it's big. We are the small group of the sex workers. Uh, Red Edition is a new organization, but we have a big plans and we want to change, change some, something in. This society is where, where we live and work. 
I will just say that definitely as soon as possible we need to cut mandatory health checking for the sex workers in Austria. What is really, really bad thing. It's shit. We need to be shamed all of people who live in Austria, not depending Austrians or migrants, because we're having this kind of law. Mandatory health checking for sex workers definitely needs to be stopped. Second thing, I want to say big, big thanks to all sex workers who are here now in this room and who was really... Yes, applause, Ui. yes. <laughs> and then I want to say thank you. According to all this discussion, what we made tonight, our prostitution and economy, this is the one of the example of meaningful engagement of the sex workers of the community in some art events like tonight. So big thanks for Impulse Dance Festival, Vierbocha people, uh, Salon Souterrain, Souterrain yes. and Elizabeth Young. Yes. Sorry, Constance has a poem for us. Yeah, and you did come uh, So please listen carefully and thank you once again.